Doran strikes the creature as it tries to squirm out of its grasp. Hey, I found something. Jesus, Jack. Take a chill pill. I'm melting. I'm melting. Oh, this stuff will just clean right off. Trust me. Doran's hypothesis needs to be tested. You're right, Jack. Doran saved the day. Well done, Doran. I don't know if that's a good idea. If a hill giant can come here and figure it out. We are all Team Awesome Corpse Inspectors. I gotta cook these before Jack sees them because they're interesting. <laughs> and uh, so he takes them over to the fire. Jack takes them. everything interesting away. They're more important as a specimen than as a food source. Just why can't things just be food sometimes? <laughs> I shame. This is episode 97, Fire in Your Belly. MVP this week is Prez of Pez for their wonderful review they left on iTunes. They're only at episode 37, but we can't wait for them to catch up and hear how much we appreciate them. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. This week we wanted to shout out our dedicated crew of memers. There are a couple of you who listen every week and immediately start in hours after the episode launches with primo golden memes. They're hilarious. And so thank you to Mosey, Doug, Rain, but especially to the uber prolific meme lords, Colin Burkhart and Connor Bullins for the hilarious content. We've been dropping some of the older images on Twitter to avoid spoilers for the newer episodes. So go check them out. Primo memes, dudes. <laughs> All right, shall we do this? Yeah, let's do it. So I am driving home from work. And I'm <laughs> almost home. I'm right around the corner and I'm like so stoked. I'm almost there. And I come to a four-way intersection. <laughs> yeah, you're blowing off the meter here, darling. <laughs> we want you to tell us the story like the blues. I can't. It's not the blues. <laughs> but I'm tell you. It's not a sad story. <laughs> it's not the blues blues. <laughs> it's not the blues. No, no. I'll leave it to you guys to judge. Continue. All right, what's up? So <laughs> I'm trying to tell you about the traffic. Yeah. Da, um, da, 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 da. Motherfuckers. <laughs> oh my God. Sorry, Joe. I can't, I tell can't us, please. Even. <laughs> okay, traffic. all right. We're done. We're done. There's a pickup truck in front of me, mm. and he's signaling that he's going to turn left. Mm. And he's starting to turn right. No. And Chaos. I'm like, That's the I just worst. sit back. Nope. Like, all fucking ready to watch this fool turn the wrong way uh, at the stop sign. And Ed, the bases are loaded. There's cars waiting in all directions uh, for this no. guy to do his dumb turn. Doesn't he crawl? He continues to turn right. He crawls out and then starts to do the biggest fucking slow ass U-turn oh, yeah. that I've ever seen yeah. in my life in the surprised. middle of a four-way intersection. Oh, yeah. Wow. And I just started clapping. <laughs> oh, like a sarcastic clap? Did gave him a little round of applause. Like, and I, oh, well done, man. Really? Good I mean, job. I, d- <laughs> I bet you feel really proud of yourself. <laughs> yeah. huh? And in do my it. mind, everyone else, all the other drivers were also applauding, Clap. but none oh, of them yeah. saw me we're, do my cool stuff. I had I had a very similar <laughs> thing happen to me today, except it was a three-way stop and there was just me and this other guy, and we were both we both had to turn. So he signals he's turning left. Great. So I pulled up, I'm turning right. There's space for two cars. Doesn't he turn right first, cut me off, and then turn left all the way oh, around right. for no reason? I was just like, well, that's Beautiful. this is his intersection, and he gets to use it the way he wants to. You know? <laughs> What's his license plate, Rob? Obviously, you memorized it. I, I did, know and I've, I've <laughs> already <laughs> shared it on every social media. <laughs> this grandmother, or so her bumper sticker said... <laughs> I was driving and I got to a four-way stop and I realized I forgot my phone at home. But there were know. people <laughs> at every stop and I <laughs> did a U-turn. I just went uh-huh. into the intersection oh, and no. a full what? U-turn and people were clapping. People hey, were clapping. Out of so. <laughs> there was this one girl who looked a lot like you, Joe. Snotty who... white woman just <laughs> applauding sarcastically. Uh, the funny part is Justin in a pickup truck. Imag- imagining Justin in a pickup I don't have any problem imagining that. I don't know why. I've thought about it. I've thought about it. I, thought about it. I carry heavy things. <laughs> I, don't, I think the fact that you think it's a statement. Sometimes you got to move the booth. Oh, I thought you were just tapping the wall like my house is heavy. <laughs> I'm, I'm tapping my, my, my sound booth for anybody who can't yeah, see, which is true, anybody true. listening mm-hmm. to this. 
Well, it's a right. sound booth. So they should be able to hear you tapping it. So yes, that's fine. true. Yeah, that's for true. anyone not on the Patreon to see our video record live on demand, they're the ones really missing out. That's what we need That's live right. in the intro. Yes. Hey, they we're doing we're recording live. Uh, no one needs to hear all tier. of our shit. The only fans here. We're recording lies. Yes. But, I mean on demand. Lies all, or lives? That's all RPGs really are, just fanciful lies, right? I mean, You're pretending yeah. to be climbing a mountain. Wait a minute. Pretty I was lies. listening to, be... to Invictus stream. They just made all this shit up. Such <laughs> bullshit. They just made it all up. This is so <laughs> bullshit. Here I am listening. I'm like a hundred episodes in, and these guys, I think they're telling the history of Faerun. Is and this then, Tolkien? Is this Sanderson? Turns out that what? red-handed Robin isn't his real name. What? No. Who said that? What? But that actually could be a thing in the game too. It's yeah, you don't know. You don't know <laughs> shit about me yet. <laughs> red-handed chickadee. So we're talking about driving, then I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. Driving. That was my thing. Right-handed that was my Robin. Story. I don't have anything to add to that, it's, though. I got stuck in a field once. <laughs> oh, There's yeah, you there. did. Me, too. Yeah. Must be a brother thing. Did you get stuck in a field, too, Alex? Yes, I did. Because your dad was also telling me about yeah. how he all, got stuck all in got a field. All got three men have been <laughs> stuck <laughs> in fields. It's <laughs> one point or another. One day it'll happen to you, son. And when it does, you remember Cotton this tale. Ninny headed thing to do. Shall I bring I, say. I bring Henry out to a field. One day all this will be possible places for you to be stuck. One day it'll be spring and it'll be muddy and you'll be up to your ankles in this and you won't know where to go or what to do. So yeah. be prepared. And you'll try to push it and out. You'll have to call a tow truck and they'll pull you out and not tell your parents. Yeah. Just like the tow truck driver did. But didn't. Joe, I feel like it, it, like to come back to your story, I feel like there are certain situations where the threshold is met for between road rage and actually being like, "Wow, holy fuck, you pulled that off!" Wow, like it wasn't that she pulled impressed. it off. Yeah, I was just like, "That takes some fucking guts," because mm. this is it's a pretty slow residential street. You could have just pulled a U-turn any old place, but no, you wanted an audience. <laughs> you wanted people to stop. And wait and, applaud, and watch you. Which you gave well, him. So Actually, I gave him his you due enabled applause. Him, so I have a do, I have a funny little <laughs> one too that I, I that I was like kind of doing the same sort of thing. It was a similar reaction. So I'm sitting there in the middle lane, going straight through a light, and I'm sitting there the red mm -hmm. light, and there's a right turn lane that you can also proceed forwards. Okay, and then that lane ends once you get through the intersection. So I'm sitting there, and I'm not really paying attention to the light too much. I'm, like, changing music. But the light turns green, and I start to drive forward. Well, the person in the right lane didn't turn right, and they proceed to go forward. It's like this, like, mother in a minivan with Ugh. a bunch of kids, <laughs> right? And I'm, like, in my... Distracted drivers. Somewhat sporty SUV. It's not, like, whatever. But, I mean, it's got some balls to it. Alex, you have a Porsche. No, it's an Audi, but... It's an Audi, <laughs> but it, it's, it's got an Audi. What I'm, what my point <laughs> it's, it's is, it's, it's like <laughs> my point being is I can put the pedal to the metal and I can get some serious traction, right? So, anyways, we start to go and I, and I kind of put a little bit of gas in. Well, you know, th th this person decides that they're also going to put gas in. Well, I'm like, mm -hmm. what the hell is going on? Oh, like, yeah. you yeah. really, you know what? Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be this dick and like kind of like ride beside you. I, you know what? I'm not in a super rush, so fine. I will let you go. You are, so, oh, you have, you have somewhere you got to be. So I'm like, fine. You want to go? Go. And I'm sitting here talking to them, even though they can't hear me. I'm like, you better freaking floor it because at this stage, this is like an open <laughs> dirt road and normally I floor it here. So you better be moving. Don't they just fucking dawdle along? la di da di da And then I'm like, are you kidding me? Like they 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 fought me to get in front of me and then fucking dilly dallied. That pisses me off. It's like, why are you gonna fight to get in front of somebody if you're gonna dilly dally? How how do you really feel? And you know what? And you know what? I wanted to ride their ass. I really wanted to like be right there and be like, fuck you. But but I'm not that type of person because they've got kids in the car. So here I am, just like, okay, fine. I guess I'll just doll along here. Can I offer an opposing theory for so you, this was a mother and, and children, and this was near your house, so this is presumably a residential street. It's sort of a new street. There's no in intersecting streets into it. It's just a straight run. But could it be possible that she was trying to slow you down, getting in front of you, and maybe making you slow down a little Ooh, bit? Ooh, 
Because there was an axe murderer. There was an axe murderer in your back seat. She's yeah, trying to yeah, save yeah, your yeah. life, Alex. <laughs> is the truth. Oh. She kept flashing the blinkers. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that movie with the subway doors, right? Like, you know, if you'd have gone Sliding first, doors. what did it, what could have happened? Yeah. Where would you yeah, be? Yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow could have been there. It or it was karma. It's so different. It's like, I, I'm not kidding you. Like, I speed. Anyway, so Alex is a jerk. Uh, what else is new? <laughs> no, no. In fact, anything... I'm not a jerk. That other person was a jerk. The mother with the kids. That just that that <laughs> who did exactly that needed, the same thing that as you. Needed, that that felt they possible. needed to get ahead of me. We're, we could let the audience decide. To slow you down. To no. save your life. <laughs> no. They did not know either. But, I could have been but going you along don't know. At 60 kilometers an hour. Alex, you don't know if she saved your life or not. That's right. Maybe she had an alternate future where she knew what was going to happen. <laughs> and by doing this, she saved your life. But that, that thankless woman, you that see? God send of a woman. <laughs> this is the problem when you play with imaginative people. All of a sudden, there's alternate it's universes, like minority and parallel report, situations. But with a yeah. minivan. <laughs> 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 All right, you gotta go back in time chest. you gotta slow alex down always second guessing you're never on your side some people's friends i tell you mildly annoy him well here you know you know the other part too is that like you at, 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 at not only did it the this go, grandmother was crossing the road <laughs> there was a baby she turned okay. and and it really irritates me because there's like uh this this railroad <sighs> crossing where people Always slow down like to like the a legal stop way that you're to get over this fucking little bump. Are you being ironic? No. Or are you being serious? No, they're slowing down. Are you, hold on. No, are you are I'm you putting on a serious. bit? Or are you actually angry that people slow down over railroads? I'm being genuine. You do not have to slow down over railroads. What do you? What do you mean? Well, like rail tracks? You do not have to slow down when you're crossing past on an uncontrolled on an uncontrolled railroad. It is a controlled railroad. Okay. Is there a bump? There's a bump. That I go at 60 kilometers an hour and I enjoy it. How dare these people? (laughs) And it's not even that big of a deal. This is a bit. And it's not even that big of a deal. I can't tell if you're putting on a bit. No, I I swear to God. I you're angry that, I get hold on. Air. You're angry that people aren't hitting <laughs> railroad crossings at 60, no. 60 kilometers an hour. I'm irritated that this person felt they needed to get in front of me. But my just but to slow just, down over a railroad crossing. But, but this it's just other it, thing it, is like it a added on to it. It added like, on to issue. it. I love just, to bolt. I love to bomb it down uh, this empty road. There's nothing residential. You're There's like get fields on both train. sides. I'm gonna take you there one time, Marlon. <laughs> There's fields. <laughs> I'm gonna take you to this shoot, field to then, the railroad tracks and really <laughs> show you what's going on. I hope you guys get stuck in the field. I'll show you what this Audi can do. Then we're gonna race. Oh, is this where Doran okay. gets his need to kill? <laughs> Rage is yeah. love of death it's and anger. Doran is so much violence. more patient, though. Doran's more like, you know what? He's Doran measured. Like, oh, please, go ahead of me. <clears throat> Doran doesn't have rage. Doran is not Alex. I can't remember where I was going with this point, but. Cut in your quote, Doran is not a smart dwarf. Yes. Doran is, but he is. Deep within the eye of the All-Father, the giant's feasting hall is pleasantly warm from the raging fire captured within a bowl-shaped basin in the center of the room. Arranged around the fire pit are several tables and benches carved from granite, under one of which lies the fire-breathing, many-legged thing that just ate Kraloth. So, Kraloth, you are unconscious, but also you are, I mean, blinded and restrained. Yeah. Uh, and just having a bad day. And you're having a terrible time. <gasps> really? Just like. Then, really. the creature is going to try to escape from escape. you. Mm-hmm. Escape from you? Yeah, it's going to, I mean, the creature is going to retreat from the combat, oh. having eaten one of you. <gasps> Uh, so it's going to take some opportunity attacks from Harshnag and from Doran right up against him. Um, so the creature runs away. What? Yeah. Doran, did you want to take an attack of opportunity? Yes, I do. Of course I do. I'm barely right, in this battle. It. I got to get in there anywhere I can. Do it, Doran. Doran strikes the creature as it tries to squirm out of its grasp and, of course, hits it with a 24. Nice. Yeah, you do. Nice. 18 damage. Whoa! Slashing. It's the most heroic thing I've ever seen. Doran, yeah. as this creature tries to just writhe away. I and stab it in the back. Yeah, <laughs> you, I, I, you kill it. I'm picturing oh, you nice. like 
crawling up on top of it and as it's like escaping underneath yeah. the table, Doran just starts like hacking away at it and you, oh, like, no, you, don't. you split its body down the side and as the creature dies in its death throes, Kraloth's body just like spills out onto the stone floor in a pool of like molten hot ichor. Amazing. Woo! Go Doran! Nice. Red just jumps down off the top of this and runs over to the body. And as he lands, the ice mantle shatters around him. <laughs> and he just runs over to his friend who's now on the floor. And he like grabs his head. He's like, it's okay. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. And he like feeds him a health potion. Nice. <laughs> we got you back, big guy. Oh, thank God you're alive. Yeah, man. Why am I sticky? <sighs> hey, is it dead? Yeah, it's, it's dead. dead. Oh, I've been used as bait before. Wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last. Thanks for uh, taking care of it. Come on, soldier, back on your feet. And Red helps you up. Doran uh, kind of walks over and starts wiping away the goop that's on you. Oh, this stuff will just clean right off. Trust me. Oh, it, uh, you, know, it, it, you can wash anything off. I know it well. And he's like, Stone, you're putting more dirt on him. Get you clean your hands hey, first, oh, you monster. Uh, <laughs> Let me help. And I screep down and like, oh, there's hair on you now. And there's like hair and dirt from Dorn and oh, Red just and like blood, sticking to this goop. blood gut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me, give me some room. I'm fine. I'm fine. Where's Jackson? Uh, Jackson is sitting up on top of the far slab um, in the southern half of the room, pacing back and forth fretfully and stretching his wings, looking like he wants to come down to see you, but he's afraid hey. um, of all the commotion. It's all right, little bro. Come on. And Kraloff holds out his hands and gestures to Jackson. But you're like 200 feet away. He flies across the room back <laughs> into your arms, this little black right. missile of fur he's like, love. Yeah, he's like walking towards him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's, uh, let's look around this room and then get the hell out of here. Yeah. And Red yeah. will walk over to the brazier. I don't think we ever actually explored it. And can I walk up and do a perception, see what it looks like? I mean, yeah, Doran took a pretty good look at it. Oh, so did you. Then you know what? I'll walk over to where the serpent seemed to have been hiding. And I just want to look around that area to see if he was either guarding something or... It's gross. There are like these huge chitinous plates that are semi-translucent. It looks like the creature maybe had molted here or mm. something. Cool. Um, so it's like a, a weird, like, serpent creature's nest. I basically. rifle through this nest as Ew. well as the body to see if there's anything of interest. Eggs. What the heck was it eating over here? I mean, this place was locked up. Red reaches down and breaks off a piece of the molten chitin and just feeds it to Shale, who's still been, like, tucked against his breast. He's like, here you go, Shale. A little bit of food for you. Uh, and, yeah, he rifles through this and the body. Yeah, you don't find anything interesting. All right. Apart from this creature's exoskeleton. I think Jack's main interest walking around the room is just to, to investigate, to see if he can, you know, find anything that catches his eye that's obvious, but to, to see if there's any evidence of, like, how long ago people were in this room and used it as a mess hall, or, or like, how long has it been sealed up behind ice? For sure. If you're interested, Harsh Knight can give you a boost up onto the tabletops. Yeah, I, I think it, I mean, the, definitely the sort of thing I would recruit Harshnag in, just, to, just for that extra giant context. You see that atop the southernmost slab, there are some neat stacks of plates and goblets that had been left here. And as Harshnag assists you in the approach, you see that they are all green and black with oxidation. Additionally, now that you're here on top of this slab... You feel like a little bit of weird texture underneath your boots. Like it's like a kind of sticky feeling, like maybe the residue of like fat or blood stains here. Mm. Gross. Um, those plates are super cool. Just for a... <laughs> Jack's got a weird fascination with the way people eat and what the tools they use. But uh, yeah. yeah, I think I think he's he's walking through the like gross drippings from centuries ago to to go see if these you know, ancient plates that are stacked neatly. And that says something about the culture of the mess hall. I wouldn't have thought, giant mess hall, let's do the dishes before we leave. So that's kind of fun. As you finish striding through this strange array of giant-sized dishes, things that would easily hold you if you were laying down on them, 
you spot a glint, something standing up against the southern side of this slab, a glint of metal. Hey, Harshnag, what do you make of that? Let's go take a look. And as you and Harshnag round the corner of this southernmost slab, you spy the missing weapon from the main statue chamber, the giant axe Mm. that belongs in the hands Uh of the frost giant. Hey-o. Way to find it, boys. Sweet. Jack sets off a little firework, a minor illusion in the far side of the room. You're like, hey, I found something. Can we take a short rest while we're kind of investigating this? You guys want to spend an hour just hanging out in the feast hall? That would be great. Yep. Absolutely. I'll go see what Jack wants. And I will stay here with <laughs> Kralon, I guess. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> I appreciate the company, Doran. Hey, Jack, what'd you find, bud? Nice fireworks. You've been practicing. Thanks. Uh, Red, look at this axe. It's a, it's the giant axe from the statue out there, I think. Whoa! Yeah. Cool. That's all. I, I, I don't know if that's related to the puzzle or the mystery or how we're going to get Oh, most definitely. The... All right. <laughs> you figured it out, buddy. Good job. Here, come here. It's a, it's a... And I go to give Jack a hug. Uh, all right. Oh. Not romantic, just a nice friendly hug. So this axe, it's steel, and it weighs 750 pounds. So Harshnag picks it up, I presume. Yeah. Yep. Um, you turn it over, Harshnag, just to see the other side? He turns it over. It's the same on the other side. <gasps> Mirror axe. <laughs> Should we ask him to wait to put it in just in case something triggers right away? Yeah. Seems like Kraloth wants to take a long rest. Maybe we should uh, just wait to put it back into the giant statue. Short rest, short rest. Maybe just a short one. Yeah, what did I say? A long, long one. one. Sorry. Harshnag nods. He's like, okay. Good find, Jack. Should we look around and see what other kind of mysteries are in this room? Sure. Take a look. If you can find something else. I, I just wanted to hang out with you. I'm just going to follow you around. This room is mostly unadorned. Uh, it seems to be kind of just a functional feasting hall rather than a ceremonial chamber. And so that's how you can see they cleaned the plates and the fire over there before they stacked them at the end of the table. Isn't that an interesting, like, end-a-meal thing they giants must have done? Yeah, totally, yeah. That's so strange. Whoa, whoa, what's strange about it? And Kraloth walks over and he picks up one of these plates. And they're they're huge, right? Like, they're, like, shield-sized, right? Yeah, definitely. You were saying that to Red, though, right? You guys were setting up camp and we're like walking around. Yeah. I, I do love the idea that just he explains it to Red and then sees Kralos' ears pick up and just starts speaking of that to that side of the room, talking yeah, a little yeah, louder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm listening. They're pretty neat, actually. Look at look at the size of this thing, Doran. <sighs> he places it down and it's like it is like a shield. It's made of copper. Yeah, yeah, made of metal that's rusted or oxidized, and you could certainly, I mean. It's big enough for you to lie down on and not be able to touch any of the outside corners. If I was going to ever open a restaurant, I'd call it the giant's plate and take one of these plates and one of those knives and one of those forks and put them all up there hanging on the sign. How cool would that be? Huh. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I just got to go do something. Give me a second. And Red like runs around the corner to a table. (laughs) You just hear him grunting, pushing something in the bag and whispering, Yeah, Shale, it'll be a gift for Jack. His next birthday will be. (laughs) (laughs) Cool. So you guys spend your hour here relaxing, joking around, trying to forget uh, the ordeal with this giant monster and otherwise just recuperating your strength. After that hour elapses, what do you do? What if these runes are sort of like the runes of uh, the portal that we took here? Oh, really? What runes? uh, Well, the runes runes outside the next door. Like, what if it's a portal as opposed to... I mean, I'm just thinking oh. here. We we stepped into a rune circle to come from. Oh, the the teleportation circle yeah, to I'm out here with city names. Yes, yes. Oh, 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 yeah, Dorian. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let me tell you, teleportation circles. You're right. You do need to know the the right key to get to you know fixate on them for sure. Uh, absolutely, could be something related to that. It's definitely magical. We know that. Hmm. Doran, good job. Jack seemed to like that idea. That means it's a good idea. <laughs> well, Look at you. I'm so proud of you. Well, well thanks. And uh, while this is happening, the Kraloth has cooked a little bit of snails, some escargot he's made. Oh. Just like campfire wow. escargot. Oh. And uh, this is special. This is part of my, my chef feat. Oh, I love it. As ah. part of a short rest, I can make special food. 
And I can make food for creatures equal to four plus proficiency bonus. So any creature that spends hit dice at a short rest gets to roll an extra 1d8. Fuck yeah. So I definitely gobble, gobble one down. Um, Maybe you found these snails living in part of this uh, eternal fire pit. They're like weird magma snails. Oh, that has been cool. just like, they're like, they have these dark black conical <laughs> shells and yeah. these like livid red bodies. Cool. It's like those uh, snails that live at the bottom of the ocean that have iron yeah. shells because they're right at the, the steam vents Ooh, or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Precisely. So Kraloth mm. sees these? And he sees them before Jack, and he's like, oh, I got to cook these before Jack sees them, because they're interesting. <laughs> and uh, so he brings them over to the fire. Jack takes them. everything interesting away. They're more important <laughs> as a specimen than as a food source. Just Why can't things just be food sometimes? Um, <laughs> I think Doran watches Kraloth and kind of steps so that even Jack, if Jack did turn, he wouldn't see what Kraloth is doing. <laughs> he catches on. And uh, Kraloth winks. And after cooking these and gobbling one up himself, Kraloth takes one of these these snails and he walks up to Harshnag. Hmm. And uh, he says, uh, you took some bad hits back there and uh, you could probably use some sustenance yourself. So uh, uh, this should help out a little bit. It's nothing magical or anything, but uh, yeah, hopefully it heals you up. Thanks for uh, tanking that thing for a little bit. As he puts it between his huge teeth, he doesn't even pull it out of the shell. You watch as the snail shell resists for just a second, and then everyone hears the crunch reverberate around the hall. And he becomes a fire giant. <laughs> <laughs> the, the frost melts. Oh, yeah, he takes damage. <laughs> oh, I'm melting. I'm melting. <laughs> yeah, and I think Red and Jack come back. Oh, this looks lovely. And he picks one up and takes a bite and then feeds one to Shale in his little chest. Aww. Delicious, Kraloth. I love it. Escargot. I mean, predictably, Jack pokes it around his plate, not because he's not interested in eating it, but also because he just wants to see what the heck it is and where it came from and how it works first. Mm -hmm. But Are you eating on one of the giant plates? Uh, <laughs> I... I was sort of picturing we were, they were all cooked in one of the giant spoons over the fire or something. Just Ooh, throwing yeah. them yeah. the Good uh, Sautéing them in the yeah. spoon. That's yeah. cool. All right. So Jack found that uh, giant axe. And I oh, think that putting it back where it belongs is going to help us with that puzzle in the other room. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Harshnag, does that seem to resonate with you? I, I mean... I will try whatever you like, but as I say, I've never been here before, so I don't know how to open this portal. Oh, it is a portal, though. I think we sort of determined that earlier. Well, according to Jack, it is, and Doran. I, it certainly could be. It's Good job, Doran. Doran's hypothesis needs to be tested, but it's certainly, you know, we saw conjuration magic there for sure, which is, you know, related to summoning things and teleporting things. It, 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 uh... You're right, Jack. Doran saved the day. Well done, Doran. Can I just say how pumped I am about that? Because I, that was a real stretch for me. I thought, no, 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 it's not going to be a Aww. portal. They're going to tell me no, and that's going to be disappointing. But so sounds to me like we're on the right track. So just to reiterate... Yeah, this it's a huge archway. It's full of mist that is glowing brightly such that the room is illuminated and this mist is just swirling and swirling and then on the floor inlaid in the stone with mithril there are these six runes and one of them you I have identified now. If it's stonework, I just leave it to Doran. By the way, good job, Doran. Well, You're so hey, smart. We don't really know quite yet, but there we need to test it, I suppose. Um, but I think, um, and then he turns a little bit sheepish and looks at the more magical of his companions, and he says, uh, "I think um, maybe someone magical might be better to try it." Oh no, not me. Maybe Jack and Kraloth. Yeah, well, I wasn't. Yes, I agree, Red. <laughs> well, I, I didn't know if you meant magical personality. Or what. <laughs> Good one. So you guys move on into this large room. We need to get in the mindset of giants. And, and maybe, Harshnag, this is, this is where you can help us out the most. Because this is a place designed for giants. I think you even said all giants know where this place is somehow. But if everybody knows how to get here, how it works must feel somehow intuitive to you. Yeah. You make a really good point, Jack. If a if a hill giant can come here and figure it out, 
well, then I feel like a little embarrassed that it's taken us this long. <laughs> this like pensive look crosses his face as he passes through the giant doors and moves into the room of the statues. And you watch as Harshnag slowly regards each of these massive idols. And he paces around the room for a little bit before coming back to stand in front of you, Jack. And he says, From what I can gather, these giant statues represent the sons of Anam, the god of hill giants here, Grolantar. Stone is Scoraeus, stone bones. And that name rings a bell to you, Jack. The frost giant deity, Thrym. And he walks over and moves as if to put the axe down into Thrym's hands. And as he lays it into the statue's hands, he looks up expectantly, and nothing happens. Yeah, I feel like we're all kind of gathered around, just like jaws open, staring. Uh, 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 uh. And when nothing happens, he kind of looks towards the four of you almost for permission, and then starts striding towards the archway, like expectantly. Okay. Good luck, buddy. Show us how it's done. Is there anything we can do? I mean, I, I don't know if it helps. That rune means ice. Maybe that's relevant. I don't know if the other ones must mean something else. But go with your gut, Harshnag. I agree. It's big. He approaches the archway and reaches out a tentative hand and presses into the mist. And then he retrieves his hand and shakes his head. It's stone beyond the mist. The portal is not open. Ah. Okay. Mm. Well, at least you're not hurt. Did anything change in the room at all when he placed the axe? Did the color change? Did any of the sigils light up? Nope. Okay. Harshnag, can any of the other weapons be removed or is it just uh, Thrins? Thrims? How do you, I get that? I get the giantish on it for me. I, I missed the name. Thrym. A bit. I want, Thrym. Is mm-hmm. it? He moves over to another one of these giant idols. He says, "Stronmouse of the Storm Giants," and he sort of nods respectfully and picks up the statue's adamantine trident. It comes away easily from the statue's hands. Oh. Mm. Okay. Does it seem like all of the weapons are in the appropriate slots? He looks around and then nods slowly at you. Yes, if my recollection of legend is to be believed as whole, then everything seems to be in order here. So I wonder then, how did that axe get in the dining hall? Did someone remove it or... That, I would say, Red could certainly roll on. Ah, let me let me think on that for a second, my friend. With an 18 plus negative one. <laughs> 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 I mean, with a 17, you're not going to learn a lot of specific information apart from the fact that perhaps a giant brought it there with them, had a meal, and forgot it. It seems like a giant must have just forgotten it in there, which means, well, or is it all that important to this? Or if part of the ritual of it was you take it, you do whatever it is you do, and then you go and join a feast hall with everybody else who just came to the Temple of Anam or something. You go enjoy all these giant plates that the endless fire provided, and you get a little drunk, you clean your plate off, you just leave shit there and go home. Like maybe it's the end of the ritual invo- ends up there. Could you carry a weapon through? Harshnag. Maybe you need to be holding the power of the weapon to enter. If all of these weapons are removable, Mm. maybe all it takes is one of the appropriate giant type, i.e. Harshnag removing the frost weapon, to carry it through. Yeah, that's a good idea, Red. Maybe you could try tapping through with the axe and seeing if it's still stone behind there. So Harshnag again strides over to Thrym, relieves this huge statue of the steel great axe, and moves toward this misty archway 
He reaches through the mist and you hear a clang as the great axe hits the stone wall beyond. Damn. Hmm. Harshnag, didn't you learn about this when you were growing up in giant school? Like, come on. When I was young, I was driven in my head all the all the ancient lore of our kind. You didn't learn anything about the Temple of Anum? Don't end focus. It doesn't doesn't make sense to beat I'm about it. I'm not beating. I'm saying think back. Think back. A dark look crosses his face, and he's like, Doran, if I retained all of the teachings that I was given by my elders, none of you would be standing here alive. Okay, sorry. Sorry, sir. Uh, <laughs> meant no offense. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we know the runes are magic here. What about touching the axe to the rune, the frost rune? I was just thinking the same thing, Red, yeah. I don't know if that's a good idea, but I got my, my diamonds. So, uh, <laughs> worst comes to worst. I, I, other people clutch their pearls. Kraloth clutches his diamonds. He sure does. Yeah, Harshnag, what, what if you took the frost giant axe and you touched it to the ice rune? Harshnag takes a step back, locates the ice rune, and slowly lowers the axe to touch this glowing mithril form. The mist transforms into churning thunderclouds lit by flashing lightning. And you can see another room beyond the clouds. Hey! Wow. I, Jack jumps up and down and just shouts, ha Good job, guys. Oh, we we solved it. it. And then like, <laughs> hey, I knew it. All right. Doran just gives a gaze in awe at, at Kraloth and, and then Harshnag. Ouch. Why me? Why are you looking at me? You, 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 <laughs> Kraloth is just petting Jackson. <laughs> just like, I was so supportive of Doran when he had the toilet port idea. And he was Doran's wasn't like, it, wasn't it, great job, Kraloth. <laughs> was it Red? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Back it no, up, no. Man. This was sorry. Red's idea. He just gives a big wow at, at Red. I do like that. Wow. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of puts yeah. his hand on your back. Yeah, Kraloth Man. points at red. <laughs> and Harshnag's like, what, I don't get a wow? <laughs> Everyone gets a wow. This is a group wow. <laughs> mm. All right. What about Jackson? Let's... <laughs> Steven! Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Meow. <laughs> what about Rob? <laughs> Who's Rob? <laughs> yeah. What about Jeff? Jack bends over and pets Kieran on the head and said, let's go before it closes. <laughs> Quickly, everyone. And we yeah. run through the portal. Beyond the thundering archway lies a hexagonal chamber whose walls rise 50 feet before tapering to a 90-foot high apex. Standing in each corner of the room is a life-size statue of a giant holding up a heavy iron lantern with one raised arm. Each type of giant is represented, hill, stone, frost, fire, cloud, and storm, in case somehow you'd forgotten them. They're archetypical depictions of these figures. They're not the same as the godly deities that you had seen in the previous room, and much smaller. Mm. A cold, magical light radiates from each lantern that they're holding, illuminating a giant corpse lying on the floor beneath a shroud of frost in the middle of the room. Jack's running into the room and sees this corpse and, like, full stop, tries to back up, and it's slippery and icy, and he's... Trying to catch his balance before he like crashes into Red or Kraloth coming up behind him. Oh, that's like, good. I like clank. It. Jesus, Jack. Oh, take a chill pill. It's like a Three uh, Stooges sort of situation yeah. here. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> <laughs> Got real excited about science whoop, and then. Whoop, 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 whoop. Why, I, uh... uh, hey, Red, can you hold Jackson for a minute? Uh, I'm gonna prepare detect magic. Of course, buddy. And I, I picture it so doesn't make sense, but I want the cat to be like, eh, eh, like scratching all over me and like trying to climb away. And I'm the like, Come, it's fine, Jack. <laughs> oh, it's because I have shale. That's yeah. oh yes, because yeah, I'm holding right. shale. Jackson is like trying to claw away from me the whole time. Like it's okay, just stay uh, still. Come on. Thanks, fine. buddy. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna take a second, ten minutes, and uh, if there's anything magic in here, we're gonna know about it. Well, if you're taking 10 minutes, let's get some language going, just in case. <laughs> I didn't want to be second, the one, but, ten minutes. but you know, but just a quick 10-minute little ritual break. Um, hope nobody minds. There's a giant Excellent. corpse over there is all you know. Jack is, like, sweating as he's looking at this, uh, all of these new things to look at. <laughs> he didn't want to be the one, but he's so excited for somebody else to be like, can we take a break? To It's all good. I'll uh, do my primeval awareness. Here, Doran. And I hand Jackson to Doran. Uh, who equally is trying to claw away, and I just flop down. 
and I'm going to do primeval awareness to see if there's any giants within a five mile radius. There are no giants apart from Harshnag within a five mile radius. Well, these aren't real, just super still giants. They're statues, <laughs> FYI. Sweet. That's great. <laughs> All right. And that one's really dead. Doran, do you want to do anything for 10 minutes? Yes, I want to do my stone cunning investigation oh. on on these uh, statues. Like, are they okay? Are they possibly frozen in time? Roll for it. So that's gonna be a ten. Yeah, I think maybe because you're trying, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but maybe because you're trying to keep your distance so that uh, your friends can finish their rituals before you approach. Mm. Um. And Jackson is clawing at his beard the yes. whole time. <laughs> yeah. Because of the tressum that's Ow, just irritating it. you. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you're not really able to discern anything additional about these statues. They are covered in frost. Mm. And Jackson paws out your nose. Frosty statues. Mm. Um, boom, boom, Kraloth and Jack's rituals activate. Mine first. No, mine. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> I like that. It's not a race. Do you like that? All right. So if there's any <laughs> magical traps, we should be able to see them. And Kraloth tentatively starts moving forward with his shield out. I'll join them just to be buddies. Kraloth, immediately, you reveal an aura of divination magic throughout the room. It's thick in the air okay. on every surface in every dimension of the okay. room. Do you we, see anything, Kraloth? Yeah, we got some divination magic. Uh, it's like a... A beautiful golden light. I mean, if you're going to an oracle, I would hope they had some divination magic going on, so we could be getting pretty close here. This could, this might have some answers for us. It seems to permeate the entire room, pretty much. We've been standing in it this whole time. What? It's all around us? Red, see if you can spot any uh, mechanical traps. Good thinking. I'll do a perception. We should find out what killed that giant in the middle of the room because that could be a danger yeah. to us whatever whatever that was <laughs> that's yeah a good maybe point. not stand right on top of the giant over the center of the room because that's where they drop the boulders maybe there's a big maybe there's a big spike underneath that giant <laughs> that we just don't see <laughs> they drop a stone from the roof and then just raise it up slowly and then it falls again yeah, yeah right I mean, you say that like it's not a trap that you had actually detected earlier on in the you know <laughs> that's very true <laughs> I'm going to roll a perception, and that's an 18. Nice. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what I see, Kraloth. You don't notice a whole lot from where you're standing in the entranceway of this room, Red, apart from the fact that there are no runes on the inside of this doorway. There's no runes with an N. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no runes on the inside of this doorway, so... One-way portal. If I look back, is the portal still open? Yes. Yeah. It doesn't look like we can conjure it from this side, so maybe we got to be quick. Kraloth nods. You know, does the corpse on the floor look like a frost giant corpse? You would have to get closer to find I'll out. I'll do it. I'm unabashed. Yeah. You know, I'm, if you're heading up there, I'm right behind you. Well, Kraloth is going to move forward as well. Same here. Yeah. We all move forward we towards it. We all do it together. <laughs> You we all, all go in a line. Link yeah. arms. Yeah. We link arms. I kind of like that. Team Corpse Inspectors are all of us now. <laughs> no, yeah. Team Awesome Boys are all of us now. <laughs> I don't have to inspect a corpse, but I'm always awesome. We are all Team Awesome Corpse Inspectors. <laughs> boys. Corpse Inspectors. Harshnag standing behind you with his arm crossed, looking really cool. And he's got sunglasses on for no reason. So we all walk up. And I just want to get close enough to see if it's a frost giant corpse. It appears to have been here for some time, preserved by the cold. As you approach, you notice that next to the body, there is a giant frost-covered morning star. And then your vision doubles. The giant's body appears to shift. It gains a translucent cast, and then a ghostly duplicate rises up out of the frozen body, animated. It looks around at the four of you with a quizzical expression, blinking its huge, blank eyes as if waking from a dream. Small folk, what are you doing here in this divine place? <laughs> Hey! 
a ghostly apparition. Spooky. Thank you once again to our wonderful Patreon supporters, Christopher Ryan Evans, Colin Burkhart, Daniel, Doug, Jessica Orrit, Mary Kaneski, Katie Orrit, and Merlin. See you soon!